I'm Kevin Shaw, and you're watching the Watercraft Journal. Here at the Watercraft Journal, we've been following the rollout of the Balassi Baraska from Europe since way back in 2017. As you guys may have known, the firm was originally called Benelli. Then it changed hands, got a new name, and an overhaul of the craft itself. We've been chasing this thing down for more than five years, and we finally have a taste of what it's like. That is, from the other side of the world. Our friends over at Watercraft Zone in Sydney, Australia, were able to get a demo from the distributor of Balassi in Australia and New Zealand. They got to spend some decent time on the craft, though they weren't able to run some fuel consumption numbers. But they were able to give it a top speed run and test out the hull in a range of conditions. Spoiler alert, Velassi claims a top speed of 78 to 80 miles per hour. But in a V-Box test, the guys at Watercraft Zone saw a top speed of 73.9. To be clear, this was an average of four runs, two in each direction which is why in one clip you can see the digital speed of the Balassi nudging around 121 kilometers per hour or 75 for a brief second. Also, Balassi says its top speed claim is with half a tank of fuel and a rider weighing 176 pounds. When the guys tested it, they had a full tank of fuel and a 154 pound rider. Water conditions were calm but not glassed out. We're not doubting Balassi's top speed run, we're merely pointing out what we got. Sure, you can get modified skis up to or in excess of this speed with a Riva kit and the like, but the Balassi Baraska is not only about top speed. The guys at Watercraft Zone say it's a bit of a weapon to ride. But before we get into that, let's give it a quick recap. While the Balassi Baraska has an Italian name, Baraska is Italian for storm, the craft is handmade in Austria. That's Austria near Germany, not Australia near New Zealand. When it went on sale in Europe in mid-2021, it was priced at 50,000 euros, which is pretty much the equivalent of about $56,000 US. And while that's a stack of cash and more than double the price of the fastest watercraft from sea Doo, Yamaha, and Cowie, it's also worth noting this is a highly specialized machine. In fact, each Balassi Baraska is built by hand over 108 hours using more than 2,000 specialty craft parts. It has a dry sump oil management system to help the turbocharged three-cylinder engine handle the high G-forces. And there's a widespread use of carbon fiber to strengthen the structure, such as the cross brace in the engine compartment, as well as carbon fiber handlebars, carbon fiber muffler housing, and a carbon fiber air intake. There are also carbon fiber accents above the quad exhaust tips and on each side of the top deck, as well as a genuine carbon fiber seat base and a genuine carbon fiber reverse bucket. While there's plenty of carbon fiber, the top deck and hull are made out of infused fiberglass composite materials. The top deck, hull, and hood cover are painted by hand, which means customers can customize their ski at an additional cost. The engine compartment is easy to access once the seat is removed. Then the top deck cover can be raised after releasing two tabs. The Balassi Baraska is powered by a turbocharged 1,602 cc three-cylinder engine and although that's similar to the 1630 cc displacement of the sea Doo rotax engine balassi says that it's its own unique design to that point the intake manifold is made of metal rather than plastic as it is on the sea Doo, and is on the other side of the engine compared to the sea Doo. the jet pump has an internal diameter of 161 millimeters and 14 vanes the turbocharger uses a mitsubishi core but the unit is custom made for Balassi to deliver zero turbo lag and deliver instant responsiveness. The fuel tank is 16.9 US gallons. The Balassi Baraska tips the scales at 809 pounds, whereas the Sea Doo RXPX300 has a dry weight of 870, and the Yamaha GP1800R SVHO has a dry weight 
of 754 pounds. Kawasaki lists the weight of its 2023 Ultra 310 between 1,032 and 1,090 pounds, but is with fluids versus the dry weight figures from the other guys. A cane and filter is attached to the carbon fiber air intake. And the engine is fed oil via a gear-driven six-stage dry sump system feeding the carbon fiber reservoir and heat extractor. The oil filter is located in a tight spot on the engine block next to the dry sump, but is more easily accessible than the oil filter on most other skis. The water injected exhaust system flows into a muffler located underneath the carbon fiber cover. The exhaust pipe then splits into two before exhaling via four exhaust tips, two per each side. There's no carbon seal. Instead, the drive shaft operates in the same way the Yamaha and Kawasaki skis do, via a bearing and two seals. There are two digital display screens and a GPS speedometer. The screen in the handlebars displays critical data such as oil pressure, manifold pressure, intake temperature, engine water temperature, and exhaust water temperature. Some of the technology can be a little awkward, however. To change the trim on the Balassi Baraska, you press a button on the left handlebar, then toggle up and down in the menu on the digital screen, not the easy up and down toggles that you see on everybody else. The handlebars are not height adjustable without resetting their position while using tools. And there is no storage for a phone, wallet, or car keys. There is a small wet storage area under the driver's seat, but it's not really practical to use. Reboarding the rear deck is also a little tricky. The aluminum sponsons are adjustable though. If we were to own one of these skis, we would definitely soften them up. The idle speed is a little high too, about 5 miles per hour. Because the engine is mounted towards the rear slightly, the Blassie is tail heavy, which pushes up the nose even before you dial in any trim. That said, the guys found that the Balassi cuts through chop well and felt stable at top speed. To sum it up, while most SeaDoo, Yamaha, and Kawasaki fans probably won't line up to buy one of these, it was still good to get our hands on one and get a little insight on a high-end European take on the modern jet ski. And the price is not just some markup. The Balassi Baraska has serious and expensive componentry, craftsmanship, and upgrades, an exclusivity that simply others can't match. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching the Watercraft Journal. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. It'll definitely help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome jet ski content, please visit us over at www.watercraftjournal.com where new articles are written and published every single day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you. We'll see you there.